we talk about uh, acoustics of consonants, and it's now the time to think of some correlates, some uh, you know cues on the basis of we, which we can predict that which consonant sound it is and how is uh, um, you know the sound which is shown through various features, right? Uh, but remember that these uh, instructions are just guides. These are the correlates which can give us some hints to predict the speech sound, that which, which type of uh, consonant it is. But um, these are not clear-cut, you know, uh, meaning. They, they do not uh, give us clear-cut directions, right? So these are just uh, guides. And the consonant sound is, you know, the product of the uh, contextual uh, particular combinations of uh, the vowels particularly. And those uh, contextual uh, particular combinations are really important in addition to these uh, instructions. Um, the neighboring vowels are important because vowels, they uh, carry uh, very stable, you know, formants. And they are uh, at times uh, altered for some of those uh, uh, beside uh, consonant sounds, right, which are attached to them. So that may also be, you know, giving us some hints. And um, these are, you know, the hints and the ideas which would help us in order to predict a specific sound. So let me take you to the table uh, where the acoustic correlates for consonants are given. So this is the table, and we are talking about the voiced quality, that if there is a voiced consonant, so there would be vertical striation corresponding to the vibration of vocal folds, right? So the voicing line would give you the hint that the sound is voiced if it is, right? on the spectrogram. The bilabial feature is given, the locus of both second and third formants comparatively low, right? So both of, uh, you know, second and third would be lower for bilabial sounds, right? F2 and F3 for second and third formant. Alveolar, the locus of second formant about, would be about 17 to 1800 hertz. That's the frequency, right, of the second formant. Then the velar sound is usually high locus of the second formant. A common origin of second and third formant is transitions, right? That would be changing, okay? Retroflex, general lowering of the third and fourth formant, right? So if third and fourth are lowering for a retroflex sound, uh, that would be, you know, just the hint that the sound is retroflex. For stop, there would be gap because there is complete blockage, so there would be gap and followed by burst of noise for voiceless stop and sharp beginning of formant structure for voice stops. For fricative, there would be noise pattern, friction above the, you know, such like these, you know, such a noise type of thing would be there, right? In high frequency region, right? So above third format, like second, third format, you would see that there is this noise for fricatives. For nasal, since nasals uh, carry the structure which is similar to vowels, right? So nasal would have formants, and those formants would be like, F1 would be 250, and F2 would be quite high, 2,500. And third would be higher than that, uh, 3, 250, right? So that's uh, the, uh, the hint that the sound is nasal. For lateral, formant structure similar to that of vowel, right? But with formants in neighborhood of 250, right? So you see, for nasal and lateral, F1 is similar, 250 and 250 but you would detect the difference between the nasal and lateral in the case of F2, because for nasal F2 is 2500 and for lateral it is 1200. So just remember that we would be collectively thinking about on the basis of these features together, right? And an approximant is, again, it's similar to vowels, but the formants would be changing. There would be glide, and that glide would be visible in the formants. So these are some of the acoustic correlates for consonantal features.